Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The final conversation we'll be having on The Breakfast will be on vaccine distribution. Nigerians were very excited when on Tuesday, March 2nd, uh, we saw 3.9 uh, million doses of vaccine arrived in Nigeria at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, from Mumbai in India. But the challenge here is how do we effectively share these vaccines to all 36 states in the country? Uh, Plus TV Africa's correspondent Jacinta Obiku has this report. We'll be right back. It has been over a year since humanity has been under the siege of the coronavirus. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, has received nearly 4 million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca via COVAX facility with health care and frontline workers to be the first to be inoculated. To this end, the Presidential Tax Force, PTF on COVID-19, has said that Nigerians under the age of 18 will not receive the COVID-19 vaccines in the country. The Minister of State for Health, Adele K. Mamura, said PTF has approved the teach strategy and electronic management immunization system. He said... The strategy called Teach Approach highnesses all the benefits of traditional electronic, assisted and concomitant house-to-house -house registration to optimize the use of innovative technology. This has got a cross-section of Nigerians reacting to this development. This is my first time from you hearing it and I don't... I, the online stuff, uh, not everybody that can do internet. Not everybody goes online to look for things like that, so it's better they do it another way. I've seen one or two persons who claim that they have registered, that they've given dates, some said Saturday, some said Friday, some said Sunday, that their dates have been given to them, some said on 12th of this month. I can't for now say for sure that that um, link is um, 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 authenticated because um, a lot of issues, a lot of security issues, uh, 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 all these uh, hackers and all that. I've heard about it, but the procedures for this registration, it's actually looking a bit cumbersome. And I just hope the higher minds don't hijack this process. Because most times, they tell you vaccines are free. But before you know it, some parts, set of, set of people in the country hijack these things and begin to sell this thing to the poor people. Richer countries have surged ahead with vaccinations, but many poorer countries are still awaiting deliveries, prompting the World Health Organization to warn that the coronavirus crisis cannot end unless every country can inoculate its populations. Jacinta Obuko reporting for Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Jacinta, for that report. We now have uh, to discuss the vaccine distribution plan. Uh, Senator Oloni Bemamora, Minister of State for Health. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me. All right. We know that the federal government, as well as commissioners, will meet today to discuss a vaccine sharing formula across the states. What should Nigerians expect to be the outcome of that meeting? <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, essentially to uh, get ourselves uh, briefed, you know, uh, in a comprehensive manner, so as to ensure that um, the collaboration, the cooperation that we expect between the uh, federal government and the, and the states uh, just to ensure that we are all on the same page so that we can have an understanding as to how we roll out and uh, what is expected of the federal authorities as well as what is expected of the state authorities so that uh, we can have a seamless um, process of uh, vaccine de deployment and uh, subsequent administration. Uh, that's essentially what the meeting is all about. Okay. Oh, oh. Does it, um, apologies, I, 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 I read in the news this morning more than 2 million uh, people had registered for the vaccination in, you know, just about 24 hours after that uh, was put out, after the link was put out. Um, but, of course, it's still very dependent on the facilities that states have readily available 
for vaccine distribution. And so, you know, what, what would you say is the, your assessment of states across the country that have people who have registered? Do they all have the facilities on ground uh, to ensure that the uh, vaccines are distributed um, uh, properly? Well, you see, this is one of the issues that we will need to interrogate at uh, today's meeting. And, um, you know, essentially, let me remind you that um, the lead agency for this uh, vaccine rollout, uh, management, deployment, and what have you, uh, is the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, which has been in that business for quite a while. You will recall that uh, just uh, last August, Nigeria was certified uh, polio free. Yes. And uh, uh, while commending the federal government and the Minister of Health, we more especially acknowledge and commend the efforts of the National Primary Health Care Agency, which is the agency uh, responsible for this uh, uh, you know, vaccine deployment and management. So they already have some structures on, on ground in all the states of the country, down to the local governments and the communities as well. So they, 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 have, their, they have their workforce uh, in collaboration with that of the st uh, you know, state, in respective states, so that they, they work together and they already have certain structures on ground. And they don't forget, we are making use of a vaccine that, that does not require ultra chain cold storage. Yes. you know, like uh, minus 70 and all that. This is the, the vaccines we are getting, that is AstraZeneca vaccines, they, they are vaccines that uh, can uh, be managed in line with the usual, you know, that is the routine vaccines that we, 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 we have been uh, having, that is polio, measles, uh, BCG for tuberculosis and all that. So they have those structures on ground. They will only leverage on these existing structures and improve and strengthen what is on ground. Okay, I, I wanted you to clarify, you know, in detail what you mean when you say they have some structures on ground, because the news is saying today that federal government commissioners want to meet to discuss how they will share the vaccines. But if you say structures are on ground to do so, could you please en enlighten us on the details? Well, don't forget that the vaccine rollout will be done in phases. So, Yes, we have received the vaccines. We received the vaccines yesterday, but we don't start deploying to the states immediately. No, that won't happen. Because we need to assess the state of readiness of each state before we deploy. And when we say the state of readiness, we want to look at the workforce that they have on ground. We want to ensure that this workforce is adequate, that is the human resource for health, for this deployment and for administration is on ground because the vaccine will be administered by some people who have already been trained in the process. Senator. Two, we want, uh, no, we go, want go ahead, to please. have... Um, the... Please go ahead, sir. Hello? Go ahead, Senator. Right. Now, we want to know, you know that uh, the, the, the cold storage uh, system is on ground as well. That's the second thing. The third thing is that we want to ensure that there is adequate security on ground to police and get this vaccine secured because you don't want anything, anything can happen. People can hijack, people can just be, you know, unruly and all that, just in an attempt to, to, get, the, to get vaccinated. So we want to make sure that all the things that need to be, to be on ground in terms of logistics, the security, the capability, the capacity, everything is on ground. It is then and only then that we will deploy the vaccines. And of course, when the vaccines are deployed, the first we have our priority list, and the first will be the uh, frontline health workers. And then we move on to the other uh, priority groups. Senator, I want you to address a challenge that we seem to have here, which is the challenge of preparation. Because most of the things you've mentioned, you want to make sure that states have the capacity, you want to make sure this. Lots of people will argue that these are the things that need to have been prepared way before the vaccines arrive in Nigeria, such that the vaccines arrive today, rollout begins immediately, vaccination begins immediately, that all these processes need to have been checked. I mean, 
the, the federal government have been saying we'll get well, vaccines before the end of January, for the end of February. Two months later, we have the vaccines, but we're not yet ready. So it's, does it mean that these vaccines will keep sitting in a warehouse till whenever we put our house in order? I mean, why do we have this challenge of preparation? No, no, no. I do not agree with you that we're not ready. That's not, that's not what I said. What I said is that we need to verify what is on ground in this state. The, the, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency did not just start working on this thing yesterday or last week or last month. No. They have been working. They already have these structures in the state. But we also need to verify the status as at this point in time before we can deploy vaccines to whatever states. That's the point I'm making. That is, you know, that's not to say they are just starting. They are not just starting. They've been at it, and I did mention that they are also leveraging on the structures already in existence, but which will need to improve upon and strengthen. That's the point I'm making. All right. Okay, and, and I, I want you to also speak on the idea of registration for a vaccine. Um, does that, you know, maybe paint it as first come, first serve? Uh, basis uh, with which people are going to receive their vaccines? No, no, no. It, it, it cannot be first come, first serve. I just mentioned that the first priority group will be the frontline health workers. Yes. Those that work in uh, ICUs, intensive care units, isolation wards, and they, of course, the, 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 including not just the health professionals in this, in, in this isolation or, you know, um, ICUs, but even the, even the cleaners. Even those who, who handle, uh, who carry patients and all that, they have to be taken care of. They are part and parcel of the front line. Then we move on to the elderly, those above 50, above 60, and particularly those with what we call comorbidities. They have existing uh, ailments like hypertension, diabetes, chronic lung disease, they have, uh, some have uh, kidney disease, they have liver disease. These are people because they are more vulnerable. So we look at those ones as well, of course, alongside with the agent. Of course, there is what we also call the strategic leadership group. For example, we, we, we're starting by Saturday, God willing, Mr. President, Vice President, they will have their, their vaccines right, you know, um, you know, in front of the camera. So as to lend credence to the safety of this uh, vaccine. Yeah. Then, of course, we also then move on to other levels of strategic uh, leadership in, in, the, in the federal and, of course, the states as well. Okay, yeah, I, I, I think I understand that. Even if there's, you know, might be issues with, you know, you know how it trickles down the line. Now you're talking about states. You know, we're also going to get to talk, about, you know, about local government. But what I'm asking is about, you know, when people are asked to register, so th those who ha have yeah. registered now that are not a part of this group that you've mentioned, um, what is the use exactly yeah. of that registration? Is it to know where people are so you can bring the vaccine to them? Is it to know if it's first come, first serve? You're the first person who registered, so it's getting to you first. Does it matter what the states um, actually need? Because Lagos has the highest number. If we have people in a those state who have, you know, registered similar with, you know, those uh, who have registered in Lagos, similar figures, are you going to then ship more vaccines uh, to a those state? Th that's really what I'm trying to clarify here. Um, what is the actual use of registering for the vaccine? Okay. Now, let me assure you that um, the, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency already has figures as submitted by the various states as we speak in terms of those who constitute, for example, the strategic leadership group, those that are in the front line, because every state has uh, figures yes. as to who and who constitute the front line workers in their respective state. They have those figures which they will now leverage on. Then the uh, people with comorbidity, they also have figures submitted to them which they will work on. So, of course, you cannot be given a vaccine when, when it's not your turn. So, was the registration? The general. Uh, apologies, Senator. So, so was the registration just for people in that group or was it for the general public? 
It's for it's, it's for everyone, but you you will now be classified based on where or what group you belong into, and it's for vaccine okay. accountability. All right. Because uh, we need to account for every single vial of vaccine. Can a can a banker register <laughs> since he doesn't fall into that? Um, look, anybody who is above the age of eighteen or eighteen and above yeah. is free to register, but you will not be you know, invited to take the uh, vaccine until we are dealing with that group at that given point in time. Okay. Oh, right. Senator, I wanted us to address the seeming conflicted information we're getting from both state and federal governments regarding how the vaccine will be shared. Now, the Edo State government said yesterday, this is a, a statement from the secretary to the Edo State government, uh, Osaro Dionoge, he disclosed on Wednesday that they have received COVID-19 vaccines in Edo State. He, he said this, and I quote, the Edo State government is in custody of doses of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines received from the federal government for distribution in the state. He goes on to say that they're preparing for local distribution, you know, in line with the national plan for vaccine distribution. Now that's Edo State saying that. Kano is expecting 155,000 vaccine doses. Delta says he plans to vaccinate about 3 million people. But the agency is saying no state has received any COVID-19 allo vaccine allocation. So what really is happening? Well, I would be surprised if any state, I repeat, if any state can lay claim to have received any vaccines as of today, except the vaccine is obtained from another source that we cannot guarantee. So I think you need to get that clear because the vaccines came on, uh, um, on the Tuesday. Second. Yes. And uh, by yesterday, Wednesday, and today, the vaccine will still be going, uh, we will still be undergoing routine, uh, you know. Uh, analysis by NAVDA and uh, no vaccine will go out until tomorrow, which is Friday, when we will be vaccinating. That will be the first vaccination site to be open, which will be at the National Hospital in Abuja here tomorrow. So this means so we need to investigate other states. For, or any state to claim that it has received vaccine, maybe not from the federal government. All right. Wow. Um, yeah, I, it it, it said it received it. According to the statement, yeah. they said, a dose state is in custody of the vaccines from AstraZeneca from the federal government. So I, I think we will need to do some, you know, digging into that, you know, as to how other states well, still would receive their vaccine doses. I, the, 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 I can assure you that if there is any conflict of me or misunderstanding or misinformation, okay. that will be clarified uh, today okay. from right. the appropriate uh, source. All right. Senator right. Olorunimbe uh, Mamora, thank you so much, uh, Minister of State for Health, for speaking with us this morning. And, um, you know, like you said, tomorrow, you know, would be the very first time, you know, that uh, vaccine um, uh, distribution would start. Thank you very um, much for I, inviting me. I'm also hoping that we can um, get the president and the vice president to do the uh, take the vaccines on TV to encourage uh, a lot Saturday, of Nigerians. Like on Saturday, said. yes. Uh, to encourage a lot of Nigerians to go ahead and take the vaccine. And, um, you know, the um, PTF, the NPDHA also has a lot of work to do to assuage the conspiracy theories and the fears of Nigerians, you know, about the vaccine. But thanks for speaking with us. And uh, we will definitely bring you in again. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. All right. Um, yes, there's, there's obviously a lot of work that needs to be done. And mm -hmm. a national uh, primary health care development agency needs to also take the steps that are necessary with regards public you know, information, enlightenment, um, with regards to the vaccine. Because I saw a lot of comments mm -hmm. um, online you know, in response to the vaccine arrived in Nigeria, some already say, oh, this is going to be hoarded like the palliatives. Some say, oh, it's going to be done the same way they, you know, did in Dumi. Some say, you know, politicians are going to hoard this for their family members and the you know, Nigerians who get Legitimate that. Legitimate fears. There's also, yeah, there's also those who say, well, I'm not going to take the vaccine because I don't trust it. I don't trust anything that comes from the Nigerian government. Um, so there is there's a lot, of, a lot of these fears that would need to, of course, uh, be dealt with. Just to throw in, throw in something about this whole COVID-19 and people who say they don't know what's in it. <laughs> 
a doctor friend of mine said, you go to a restaurant and you buy meat pie. You don't know what's inside, but you eat it anyway. Mm -hmm. But this is a vaccine that has been certified by health experts, by researchers. There's been clinical trials, has gone to tests, and it's for your safety. So if you have the opportunity to take the vaccine, I, Testimonies I would from other customers that have eaten Amala. <laughs> the Amala. Yeah, yo, Lots of people have taken enough. the vaccines and recovered. <laughs> we had uh, Augustine Ekpe from the United Kingdom. Yeah. He took the vaccine. We interviewed him here and he said it's just fine. I'm just saying so, you know, that you know, there would be those fears because it's not like Amala that people have eaten. Don't mind us, Harry. They, okay? they can testify <laughs> of what you. that it will do taste like. Anyway. Thank you very much for, for being a part of our day this morning. We appreciate you joining us. And if you missed any part of the conversation, we're at Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa. I'm going to be back at 9 a.m. with a news brief this morning. Thanks for joining us once again. Bye -bye. See you.